Fearless Gamers, Matt here for Fearless Games, and today I'm going to be talking about an alternate paint brand to Citadel Paints. Now, a lot of people out there do use Citadel Paints, even for different games like Infinity and um, Flames at War, War Machine, and stuff like that. And that's a really cool paint company. It's fairly re um, relatively available for everybody. Uh, the colors are nice, and st and um, it's a decent quality paint. It, you know, it doesn't peel off with off your fingers with, due, due to handling. And all in all, I think it's a very good product. It's primarily my paint of choice when painting miniatures. But for a lot of people, Games Workshop paint isn't that good. And comparatively to other brands out there, they're pro most likely right. It's not the best paint line in the world out there. There are some better paints um, that are available. And also, for those who've been sticking with Games Workshop for quite some time, the colors haven't always trans um, stayed through t stand to the test of time. Some colors were dropped completely, some were altered so they don't match up with the older Citadel paint line. Like, um, and, like, Moot Green is, like, the closest you're ever going to get back to striking Scorpion Green, and it's just not the same. And there are also, like, in some colors that drop down completely, like Brezen Brass or Warlock Purple, I think, that hasn't had really a carryover, but I could be wrong, I have to check my conversion chart again. But, or Imperial Purple, that's another color that, um, kind of went off and did, went to the Age of the Dinosaurs. And it's kind of a, upsetting. Now, what if you want to try and get something that's fairly similar to those old colors, or you just want to not deal with Citadel paints at all? Well, a lot of people turn to Vallejo, because Vallejo has a large variety of paints. People think they're better, they're thinner, so they're easier to work with without having to thin them all the time, and for all in all, it's a nice, high-quality paint. Personally, not a fan of Vallejo at all, but everyone seems to rave about them. Um, I know the wild card loves them for their metal colors. They do make a very nice metal line. If you're looking for a really nice, crisp, gr um, phenomenal metal color, they're definitely worth a try. Me, personally, I've never liked the jar system. I hate that squeeze bottle thing because I always end up using giving myself too much paint and then I just wasted half the jar. Or I give me very little paint and I have to keep drop and drops in there, but I have to conserve it because I'm afraid I'm going to use too much. And so it just became annoying, and I never had luck with the paint staying on my models. No matter what I did, Vallejo paint just seems to peel and chip right off. Maybe it's just me, I don't know, but that's been my experience with Vallejo. But there is one paint company that I do go to when I need an old GW color that I just can't find anymore, or when I just don't feel like that the colors that GW has in this range that I need are up to the challenge. And that is Coat de Arms from Black Black Mini Black Hat Miniatures. Now, Coat de Arms paint was actually the original Citadel paints from what I understand. The um the company, um, Black Hack Mat Miniatures, used to have a chart going, you know, for those of you who remember us as Citadel Paints, here's a conversion chart so you know which colors are which. Since Games Workshop has kind of removed the color line completely, they've taken down that conversion chart, which is upsetting, but you can still get the paints from them. Now, they were, now, it was one of these things where Games Workshop hired them out to make the paints under the Citadel name. And so when they left, they kept the paints that they created, and Games Workshop just went off with another company. And what's really cool is, is the colors are still just the way you remember them. And they still make the flesh wash, the inks, the inks. Oh my, I am so glad when I found this company, because the red ink was my go-to color for blood effects. And I haven't been able to use it in so long, because mine ran out so long ago. They also have, and the colors are just... Great! They have a whole fantasy line for, say, you know, like Infinity, War Machine, Warhammer, and then they've got a military line for games like Dystopian Wars or Flames of War because they like look better in like the old like military esque colors in general. And what's neat about them is is their paint is not. I feel like their paint is is kept in mind with many war hobby games in mind, but models 
as well. So you get a very thin um, paint, so pretty much I never feel the incentive to have to water down my, co my Cote d'Arm colors because they just seem so thin right off the bat. The jar setup is a lot better designed. Um, the one, like, it takes an effort to get these pop tops open. They are using pop tops, but what I like is the way that the paint jar is designed, the, li the lip on the back is easily accessible, so you don't have to, like, dip in and end up getting half your brush covered because you couldn't see where the lip piece is or because of the way the, um, the brush had to go in, it touches the side and gets all this paint on it. I've never actually had any paint trail off the side of my brushes from this. And also, neat thing is, is you see the, um, no, sure if you could see it, like the paint that's dried up along the side of the edges and um, along the top there on the um, top. Well, despite all of that, this paint has stayed fresh for two years. This paint is two years old. I haven't watered that down. I haven't done anything to this paint. It's just, it stayed this way like that. And in fact, I think for, this was sitting unopened for about a year before I even tried it. Even my other paint colors that I've had for about a year now, they're still just as good as when I bought them. It's, I, I, half the time I'm just mind blown because I'm just so used to my old GW paints just drying out once the jars open that I'm not used to this stuff being ready to go whenever I need it. Um, in terms of the jar sizes compared to Citadel paints, they're bigger. They're very, they're much bigger, and I feel that you and you do get a little bit more paint out of these guys than you do with these Citadel paint colors. They are a wonderful paint um, quality. They I haven't had them chip or um, peel off afterwards. In fact, for any of you guys who saw. Um, Rise of the Magi, Tarim hair was actually painted using the um, putrid green from the Cote Arms paint line. And I think he's personally one of my best models that I've ever painted. The, um, and also just a funky note with that, they do make their own green ink, but this was actually using the um, Beltan green stuff. Does a nice combo. Wait, <coughs> if you ever want to use Citadel paints with Cote Arms, they do mesh very well together to create some really cool vibrant um, color schemes with them. And it's not that more, it is a little bit more expensive if you live in the US because it is a UK company. So I can't speak for anyone who on the UK end who um, has access, a little bit better access to co um, Cote Arms than we do. Now on average, about 350 is like a Games Workshop paint 350 um, a jar. Um, with this stuff, I actually, I bought three paints with shipping. It ended up being like four ten a bottle. So for a higher quality paint, a much longer lasting paint, and more paint in the jar plus a superior jar, I only paid a, just a little over 50 cents a, a bottle more than I would have going to games workshop granted it does get a little bit more pricey if you're only buying like one jar or two jars because you have to deal with the shipping and all that but if you get like three or more it tends to end up be costing not that much more than gw paints so if you're ever looking into a new paint company um all together excuse me because you're you're just done with Games Workshop paints, or you don't like Games Workshop paints at all, or you just haven't been happy with the new version of a color Games Workshop use, um, has now, Cote Arms is a great place. Like I said, they have Brizen Brass still, they have Striking Scorpion Green, Warlock Purple, Imperial Purple. Some of them are under different names because I guess Games Workshop owned the names and they weren't allowed to keep them, which, understandable. Some of them kept the same names because I think, like, like, um, no, like, um, I think there's like a Warlock Purple or one of the colors was pretty much the same name as it used to be on the Games Workshop um, line. Some of them were slightly changed names, like Striking Scorpion Green just became Scorpion Green, and Brizen Brass is now just Brass. But there are a bunch of charts out there. I will put a link in the description to the 
Cote de Arms miniature um, catalog so you guys can check it out. In terms of a conversion chart, you're probably best looking for one on your own because the ones that I found, I haven't been able to find one that lists all the colors that Cote de Arms used to, that the translation for all the Cote de Arms colors themselves. But definitely worth a look, worth the price that you're paying, and I I haven't looked back since I bought those colors, and I always try to find use of those colors in my schemes. And in fact, there have been a lot of times where I'm like, ooh, I have, um, ooh, I need this color, wait a minute, I have it in Cote de Arms, so what's the point? I'm just going to use that one instead. And not a difference. Uh, some of the colors that are some of the colors stay spot on to some of the GW new colors and if you're someone who's had a lot of the old models and have painted a lot of them and just don't want to use the new color paints because you don't want them to look different then Cote Arms is a great place to go to and that is all really for right now if you have um, if you have any comments about your favorite paint um, that you use leave a comment in description um, we'd love to hear it, and I'm sure a lot of the other viewers would like to hear different options for paint colors as well. And that is all for right now, so thank you all for watching again, and until next time, fearless gamers, take care.